Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff, and welcome back to Cheap Knife Week. We're doing it again. This is volume four. Um, I know a lot of you enjoy Cheap Knife Week, and I do too, and I think this is a great time to do a Cheap Knife Week with the holidays right around the corner. Um, we're all going to be looking for some inexpensive gifts and stocking stuffers uh, to give the people in our lives. So I think that's what's going to be very, very helpful with this um, season <laughs> of Cheap Knife Week. So before we get started, let's just do a little bit of a rundown for people who are maybe unfamiliar. Cheap Knife Week is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be looking at five cheap knives this week. And at the end of the week, we'll compare them and rank them from worst to best. And uh, I like doing this series because I feel like a lot of times the lower tiers of the knife world get ignored. And I think that's a shame because for most people, that's that, that's where we start. You know, I know for me, that's exactly where I started. Ozark Trail, I carried so many Ozark Trail knives when I was a teenager. And uh, they've got a very special place in my heart. And so I want to periodically review um, knives that are cheaper than $30, um, preferably things that you can buy in like a brick and mortar store and tell you guys whether or not they're worth it. Uh, most of the time when we do Cheap Knife Week, we have a little bit of a theme going. The first time we did it, it was, um, you know, knives for kind of um, beginners into the hobby. And then we did knives for people who maybe aren't knife people. This year, or this season, I guess, this this time around, uh, we're talking about knives that might make good gifts. Um, of course, that's just kind of a theme. The overall message is whether or not these knives are good. So today we are starting out with this Ozark Trail knife you see before you here. I bought this from Walmart a while back. Uh, they're bringing out all the holiday stuff. They've got the kiosk set up with like all the knives and things. And I saw this and I thought it was very, very interesting. So. That's what we're going to be reviewing today. Let's go ahead and start off with a blade length measurement. Sharpened edge coming in here just a hair over three inches. If we measure all the way back to the scales, we're getting around the three and a quarter mark. So not a large knife at all. Uh, I think Ozark Trail does all their knives in like that seven and a quarter inch um, size range. They, they really like that. All right, let's bring out our size comparisons. Here is the RAT-1, and here is our R2-D2, pretty close in size to that RAT-2. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out our Civivi comparisons, some more high-end budget knives, if you will. Here is the Civivi Praxis, and our Civivi Elementum, or in this case, the Elementum 2. Very, very nice. Let's go ahead and bring out our USA made comparisons. Spyderco PM2 and the Benchmade Bug Out. And just for the heck of it, let's compare against this um, Kershaw knife that's from their 2023 Walmart promotional assisted knife pack. I made a whole video about that pack. If you haven't checked it out, um, you definitely should. It's kind of in the same vein as the rest of this video, you know, cheap knives that might make good gifts, but yeah, check out that video. So there we go. What are we looking at in terms of our materials? Well, we've got plastic scales and I think this pivot collar is, I, I want to say aluminum, but it might just be plastic. <laughs> um, I, I can't really tell. And then for the blade steel, we have no idea. Uh, it's whatever um, Ozark Trail uses, which uh, I don't think they've revealed to anybody. But there we go. There's our materials. Let's go ahead and go to the cutting footage. Well, guys, here we are. Cheap Knife Week, Volume 4. Pretty excited about this. Um, I try and do a Cheap Knife Week about every six months or so. Um, yeah, so it's early in the morning. I've got to get a bunch of review cutting done because we're doing this a little bit short notice. I'll probably talk about more of that in the table portion of the video, but here we are. Gotta get to work after this, so we're gonna try and speed through this, or at least go as fast as I normally go, which is very slow. So, 
we're starting off cheap knife week with this knife here this is an ozark trail something or another right they don't give their knives names they don't even give them model numbers it just is what it is but this is a crossbar lock and let's go ahead and start off with the action out of the package this thing was a little bit stiff but it has really really loosened up um, very, very good thumb flicking action. The reverse looks a little more difficult. Um, it's a little bit harder to get to the thumb stud because it is so close to the scale, but you can, ouch. <laughs> you can do it um, if you practice it enough. Um, but yeah, the action, honestly, pretty good. You can see there, yeah, it'll pull the lock bar back and it will just kind of glide shut. So very, very good, solid lockup, like rock solid lockup. Very, very happy to see that. Let's talk about the ergonomics. So the handle is not neutral. You do have these big um, choils in here for your index finger. You are kind of locked into that grip, but it's not necessarily a bad grip. You've got a little bit of jimping on the spine, not as much as I would like, but you can kind of get up in this little, this little poon right here, this little thumb ramp. Um, the ergonomics are fine. It's a small knife. Uh, I can feel every, feel a little bit of a couple hot spots every once in a while, but by and large. It's, uh, it's pretty decent, so nothing to, to really complain about. The scales actually have a little bit of, not really contouring, but kind of chamfering around the sides, which, yeah, makes them fit the hand a little bit nicer. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the carry. So, tip-up carry clip, inset to the scale, does have button screws, and it is not reversible. On an uh, ambi knife like this, that's a huge, huge missed opportunity, but, you know, there we go. All right, let's see how it goes into the pocket. Pretty nicely, honestly. And the knife is pretty lightweight. Um, it's not super obtrusive. Yeah, it carries just fine. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and give you guys some uh, close-up looks at this thing. There you go. Love the pop of blue there. All right, let's go ahead and start our cutting. So... <laughs> I am without my truck, it's in the shop. And so normally I do my review cutting on the bed of my truck. I'm borrowing uh, my mom's car right now while my truck's getting repaired. And it does not have a truck bed. So I had to go and buy this little table, emphasis on little, this thing is absolutely tiny. Look how short this is. But we'll try not to hold that against it. So, blade steel on this thing is who knows what. It's a mystery steel. shake the table goodness gracious all right so yeah the steel does not hold up that great this was not very sharp out of the box I sharpened it a little bit and even the use I've done in just the week or so I've been carrying it has dulled it a little bit um, but it is decently thin, and uh, yeah, I guess it's got that going for it. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and grab our rope. Okay. Oh, that probably wasn't on screen. Always gotta adjust whenever I change up my uh, my format for anything, right? Okay. Let's make sure you guys can actually see this this time. There we go. One, two, three. Not real great. Not real great at all. Now, why was that? Probably because the edge angle on this thing is absolutely horrendous. When I sharpened this, really what I did was I tried to hone it with um, some coarse ceramic rods and some fine ceramic rods, and I tried to keep, um, ouch, the angle that they had on there. Angle, it was like a bunch of them, so yeah, not real great there. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the pool noodle. We're almost out of pool noodle, but let's do this. Okay, that's all we're going to do with that. 
So like I said, the blade itself is pretty thin, which means the knife could have a good, a better geometry if I were to put a better edge on here, which I will. That will improve the performance quite a bit. As it is right now, pretty ugly. Pretty ugly. Look how it chewed that up. Not real great, but again, $5 knife. We could fix this with a better edge. I don't have my piece of wood to throw knives into, which is a shame. So you guys don't get to see a knife throw today. I'm very sorry. Let's get back to the table. Alrighty, we are back. So let's talk about this knife. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about first. Um, I actually have a first impressions video of this knife coming out next week. So this is going to be the only time in the channel history that the review of the knife has come out before the unboxing. Um, the reason I did that was a little bit convoluted. Uh, this has been a very, very crazy um, last couple of weeks for me. I have not been able to film anything. In fact, I'm actually filming this video the Sunday before you're watching it. So you're going to be watching this my tomorrow. I very rarely do that. I like to have my content scheduled out. Um, I've just been so busy with school and field work and work that uh, I have gone behind on filming. And I knew I wanted to do a cheap knife week. I knew I wanted to do it this week. I wanted all the videos to come out the, the week of the 6th. That's my finals week. And so I'm gonna try and film all the videos today, upload them throughout finals week, and then not have to worry about that while I'm doing finals and everything. Um, but I didn't have all the knives I needed for cheap knife week. Um, one of the knives that I was going to use got stolen when my truck was broke into. Um, it was actually that, I made a video about the knife, that, that crappy karambit thing I bought from Tractor Supply. I was going to throw that in here. But some poor person stole it. And um, I, I mean poor as in, I'm a, I feel bad that they ended up with that horrible knife. Not poor as in economically challenged. But I mean, if they're breaking into a college student's truck, they were probably pretty poor. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I had to get some replacements. So I bought this knife um, last week, and I carried it all week. The other knives that we that we we're going to be reviewing, um, I've had for longer. Uh, but yeah, this one was kind of the last minute addition. I had another Ozark Trail knife that I was going to put in here. That's not real great, but I said, you know what? Let's put Ozark Trail's best foot forward. So that's what we're doing here with this one. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about this knife. First of all, I think this is a really attractive looking knife. Um, Papa Blue, of course, adds a little bit of something, but I also kind of like the angular lines of the handle and the blade. It's a good looking blade. We've got lots of swedging going on, satin finish. Um, I'm not sure if this is a borrowed <laughs> design. I, I don't think it is. Um, I think this is an original design, but uh, if I'm wrong, you guys can let me know in the comments. But yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good looking knife. And honestly, if you didn't know that uh, these were plastic scales, they kind of look like aluminum from a ways back. And I think that's I think that's pretty cool. So great looking knife. Next thing I like, um, the ergonomics actually work out pretty well. Um, I wouldn't say this is the greatest ergonomic masterpiece in the world. They do force you into a certain grip, but it's actually a pretty good grip. And there's nothing that stands out to me as being terribly wrong. So the ergonomics are absolutely fine. Next thing, the action is actually very good. Um, whoops, it's a little bit small. So sometimes I get that reverse flick <laughs> messed up, but yeah, the action is very, very nice, especially for a $5 knife. If you guys remember a while back, actually for another cheap knife week, we reviewed another Ozark Trail shaft lock knife and um, it was fine. This is much better. Like this, this action is much, much better. It feels really great to pop that out. Um, got a little bit of lock stick, but I don't really mind that. So there we go. Speaking of shaft lock, uh, one thing that they did that I think is a huge improvement over their past Atlas or Axis lock knives is that uh, they did not label this as the shaft lock knife on the packaging. Um, they did that with the other one and obviously people memed on them pretty hard for, you know, the shaft lock. They, they kind of had it coming, but uh, yeah, this one they just called a, a folding knife on the package. So there we go. 
Next thing I like is that this thing's actually built very, very well. So if we look here, we can see that it is perfectly centered, which, all right, that's awesome. Perfectly centered, and the lockup is rock solid in every direction. This thing is a bank vault. And for a crossbar lock, that's, uh, that's pretty special. Um, you don't often see that, especially at, in an ultra budget crossbar lock. So I'm all about that. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Next thing I like is that they did give this thing a tip up carry clip. Um, Ozark Trail is learning, right? Uh, I don't think, I, I think one of the reasons they, they, they did this is because otherwise it'd be messing with the crossbar, but I like seeing it anyways. Um, for a long time, pretty much every single Ozark Trail knife was tip down carry, and some people might prefer that. I don't. And so seeing them do tip up, I, I like, and also it kind of, it kind of feels like they're starting to think about, um, the, the kind of their, their designs are so like, okay, we want to appeal to these collectors <laughs> and enthusiasts and stuff. So let's, you know, let's, we, we know they like tip up carry. Let's give them tip up carry. So very, very co cool there. Next thing, the, th the thumb studs are actually pretty comfortable. The axis lock is easy, or the crossbar lock, shaft lock, whatever, is easy to grab onto. The studs stick out enough to get some purchase on, but not too much to be, you know, annoying. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the blade. Um, this is <laughs> a double-edged sword. <laughs> not really, it's a single edge, but um, I, I do like the overall design of this blade. I think this is a great blade shape for EDC, kind of a drop point, clip point thing. I'd call this a drop point. Um, with a hollow grind, uh, yeah, I'm I'm completely happy with this blade shape. I think it's a good looking blade shape, and I think it's a, a very useful one. Now, the steel obviously isn't anything exciting, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The sharpening out of the package was terrible, and the performance of this blade um, was not great. However, I do think that once I reprofile the edge, and you know, give this a little bit of a special treatment, I think it'll be a much better performer. So I do like the potential in this blade. And so with that, let's go ahead and pivot to some of the negatives and let's start with that blade. This knife was terribly sharpened out of the box. It was dull, the edge angles were whack, and like I said in the cutting for footage, even though I hit this thing on my ceramic rods, I tried to stay true to the angle that it came with. You can see here, yeah, just terrible. On this side over here, they didn't sharpen all the way back. Yeah, so not the greatest. Again, I think I can fix that with a little bit of tweaking. Okay, next thing, they didn't make the clip reversible, and that's that's a shame. It's it's really really sad to see. This is an otherwise completely ambidextrous knife. They could have just they could they could have easily swapped that clip over. And if you're like if you're about to say, well, it's a five dollar knife, blah 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 blah, you know, you can't expect everything. There's another Ozark Trail knife I have that I'll be reviewing later. Um, that's a crossbar lock uh, that does have a reversible clip. So they kind of shot themselves in the foot there. I'm not going to bring that knife out because I want it to be a surprise for the unboxing. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool one. So yeah, no reversible clip. That is very, very sad. Next thing, and this is, this is a little bit weird, and this is kind of nitpicky. But why the heck are the pivot screws this way? Like... They're raised above everything. I don't know why they did that, but they did. So, hooray. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the jimping here. Um, I wish it went out a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, but that's, you know, I, I really, I always complain about that with uh, with pretty much every knife. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, T6 hardware back here. Ozark Shell's hardware is pretty soft. You know, probably strip it. I have not tried to adjust anything, but I would imagine that we've got free spinning everything. So that's not great. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go to my final conclusions. So, as always with Cheap Knife Week, since, you know, we're looking at, at knives that aren't necessarily the, the, you know, cream of the crop, I, I tend to be a little bit easier on my uh, criticisms. I point out the screw head thing here. That's a little bit weird. If I saw that on a Civivi, I would definitely say that's unacceptable. On here, it's just kind of funny. I don't really mind it because $5 knife. At the end of the day, my conclusions are that this is really, really cool. 
Now, while I carried it, I could not keep this thing sharp to save my life. Um, but it's a five dollar knife, and it's built really well. It's got a you know, amp, it's got that that crossbar lock, um, decent action, and I think it's I think it's a really really good deal for five dollars. Uh, this is the kind of knife that uh, if if I had been given this knife in high school. <laughs> I think it really would have changed the way I look at knives um, a lot sooner. Uh, this is really, really good. Um, yes, the materials are cheap, but it's honestly put together very, very well. And again, there are things I could nitpick. If this was a more expensive knife, I'd complain about those um, screws on the clip not being flat. But they inset the clip. And this clip is actually a good clip. So I'm not going to rag them too hard on that. There's, we've all heard that saying, you know, you get what you pay for. In the case of this knife, for five bucks, you get way more than what you're paying for. This is not in the same category as your crappy gas station MTEX. This is not something that was just thrown together. This is actually made well. And it's shocking to me that we can see this kind of quality in the $5 range these days. So... Is this thing going to blow you away performance-wise? No. Is this thing going to blow away someone who's an avid collector in this hobby? Probably not. I'm a collector. I still get excited about stuff like this, but not everyone's like me. Not everyone is willing to dive into the sewers of cheap knives um, and find the, the hidden gems, but I, I love stuff like that. And if you like things like that, this is this is a great knife. If you're looking for a stocking stuff or if you're looking for some, a gift for someone... And, you know, they're not necessarily a knife person. Um, you know that if you give them something super expensive, they won't use it. This is a great way to go. This is a really, really great way to go. Um, before we end up here a little bit, another nitpick I have that, again, this is, if this was a more expensive knife, I'd really complain about this. The studs are a little bit close to scales. And so with the thumb flick, you can get it really, really well. But on the reverse flick, it's a little bit harder to get under that stud. And, I mean... You can do it. It's hard for me to do it right here in front of the camera. But yeah, you can do it. It's just a little bit more difficult. But this knife here, overall, this is great. This is a very, very cool knife. This came out of nowhere for me. And um, yeah, I think it might have a chance of upsetting some of the other knives I'd already selected for this series. So there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let's give you a sneak peek of what's coming out tomorrow. There you go. Until then, if you like the video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next video. Merry Christmas. <laughs>